Hi, it's Joy, and today I'm going to be watching Fargo Season 2, Episode 3, The Myth of Sisyphus. Sisyphus was the one who was condemned to push a boulder up a hill for eternity, like never getting anywhere and never making any progress. So I wonder what character that's going to relate to. Um, I'm pretty sure it was the book that the butcher's daughter was reading as well. She was reading like The Myth of Sisyphus, so is she going to be involved? I'm just intrigued. Um, it's been a, definitely a crazy start to this season. Thank you so much, Albert, for sponsoring. I am excited to see where this goes next. I'm also scared because Fargo can be crazy, but I'm mainly excited. If you're watching this on YouTube, a reminder as always, you can find the unedited version of this reaction up on my Patreon two weeks in advance as well, and you can get the edited version one week early, and you can be amazing like Albert and sponsor shows, and yeah, let's go. We're talking about the Kansas City Mafia. They're like all the sharks in the sea. And we're Plus times change, small businesses have to get absorbed into the bigger corporations. <laughs> Or thyself. <laughs> what are you on about? He's wise. Wiser than you. And I'm not afraid of a war. You should be. But if these Kansas City moves, she's gonna go and come at you, shoot. Um, trigger them into coming. God damn no. Then he's leverage over the frow and maybe turn things our way without buying a bunch of extra bullets. Oh dear, that couple is in the headlights of both law enforcement and multiple mob people. <laughs> Went to see about our judge's caseload. Maybe there's a connection to our shooter. Over. There is. Well, I'm a fry cook and a waitress also. Yeah. Shot multiple God. times. God. Moonwalks past. You've got to stare at her as much as you can. Easier if it was your own prints on the gun. But that's the line <laughs> what you should be thinking. And we had a saying, Fubar. Yeah, we had that too. <laughs> you wanted to say a saying. Might be best just to confess to the crime myself. <laughs> Go with a long life in a cell somewhere. God, everything goes wrong because he stops being a cop. I'm so stressed. I'm just getting really absorbed. I feel like I didn't really react much to that scene. I was just enjoying <laughs> You're all a bunch of squares. They're fine with selling it to other people's kids, of course. Oh no. Don't get in touch with the murderers. She murdered him. Well, she helped murder a man. Out onto the road and got himself hit by a car. Uh huh, hack up. Like, uh, hit and run? Yeah. Confess yeah. right now, it'll be better for you. Yeah. Oh, thank God they did find glass in the road. Thank you. I'm thinking, hey, Pig, didn't you say that? I'm sorry, but that just makes sense. <laughs> I mean, how come the motors don't stop? If they hit a person, run them over, I mean. <laughs> Drive home with a Gerhardt in your windshield and you know, start supper. <laughs> That's exactly what she did. All I'm saying is, there's a theory. So you could have confessed ages ago. Today. Is that the typewriter dude? <laughs> you were rather obvious. That is, if you're looking for a classic, can't do better. Such a <laughs> salesman. He's a squirrely fella. <laughs> Might be worth bringing him down to the station, digging down. He told Rye Gerhardt to talk to him, mention the Gerhardts. How many cases she have? I can't go digging down on every sad sack. Yes, you can. You need to talk to every. That's what you've got to do. Go through it case by case by case until you find something. Watch me drink mine. Get so lonely here by myself. Men. I may even dance for you. Men. Downtown, so. I'm thinking you're the fella down She's kind of involved in this crime family now. <laughs> no. Well, I mean... You're in danger. You should have yeah. talked to the cops. You should have talked to the cops. You're involved with a crime family. I mean, I suppose that also might not end well for you, but, uh... No, it's better me. <laughs> See, you know, sexism, bad. But you get the men to cover up the murder for you. It'll work. Your well, boss okay. saw the car. We got rid of the. I mean, the guy's all ground up. And the Please say. Burned his clothes, he said. So He's not in the burgers. Once and the steaks. I'm still concerned about that. Well, you have to tell from the tires. Although it's ice, I suppose, yeah. Is he gonna miss. He did it with the wrong end of the car? I'm. I backed into the garage door, okay? Yeah, <laughs> she's got it all covered. 
genuinely very stressful. Is your mother? Off the crutches, thanks. Yeah, part of the community. Man, we found the murder weapon at the scene. He's the just doing his job. Everybody mm -hmm. go easy. Oh, great. He's gonna take this, really make this situation get really calm. Mad Schmidt's boy here. You keep talking like that. Well, now to be fair, I'm the one who found the gun, yep. so I think you're dancing with the wrong girl. Oh, enemies instantly. About Mike Milligan, out of Kansas City. You know where we can find him? Hmm. Pretty sure he's looking for your brother too. Yep. <laughs> you heard Dodd, they own most of the town. The federal judge? They killed a judge. They killed a judge. Surely you can take it up a level. From just the local town judges. I mean, he's got probable cause to enter. It's very clearly been broken into. He should have a partner. Whoops. Drawing on a police officer during a break in. Gotta ask you. You make it sound like a prog rock band. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this guy's so weird. I love the weird criminals. This is why they should always have a partner, even if you're like a state trooper or whatever. Like, two against these three would be a little better matched. Always in sets of three. That is what, um, Rice or. Reports from to Vermilion. Strange happenings occur. They are near. <laughs> Strange happenings, huh? I wondered what was causing that. <laughs> now he knows. That is a piece of his puzzle, though, why the guy wandered into the road. <sighs> Got a lot to discuss. It's been real high noon, my day. <laughs> Gerhard say. Oh, I love this family. I'm sad because I know they're gonna have sad times. Okay. <sighs> Button up that coat. You're embarrassing me. You're a despicable man. This is a huge shut Oh god, I told you you were gonna die. You should have told the cops. You just saw what he did to his kid. In the hole. Oh my god. Uh, this is why you just if you know it's part of a crime syndicate even if they're the weak link of it you just stay clear mate okay i still think they're gonna kill him once they've got the information they need here comes another murder kansas city gets in your way um, if the cops get in your way if anybody gets in your way you kill them dead no not the cops his tie sticking up. At least I know where to find his body. Okay, so I it was fairly clear that it was not going to end well for the typewriter guy the minute he appeared on the show, knowing Fargo. But um, he he made a lot of bad choices that led to his fate. Um, he did not deserve to die. But why would you get involved with a crime person and try and swindle them as well when you know you're bad with money? Um, just oh dear, he should have talked to the cops that's kind of another lead that's gone dead for the cops but at the same time if they can kind of say oh he's gone missing now he probably was linked to the case and it was his case that's why the judge got killed they can fill in the blanks even though he's dead such as he doesn't know where Rye is and I love the fact that every single character on the show apart from the couple are looking for Rye meanwhile they're all eating him in the hamburgers I really hope they're not eating him in the hamburgers um so yeah the crime family power dynamics are still at play you've still got the son wanting to be taking over from the mother the mother who's doing a pretty good job of being in charge if you could just leave her to it <sighs> men <laughs> but all the shenanigans and it's really interesting to me how kind of they don't want their kids to be involved now there are other children running around i don't know if they're direct family members because i don't know if the boy has any brothers or sisters and clearly the awful eldest brother does not want his daughters involved he can abuse them but god forbid they become part of his crime syndicate sexist um, but I think it's just really interesting when they're all looking for a ride, they're all sort of following the same trails and leads, and they're all following the wrong one, and the only person so far who has given the truth of what happened is a woman, who's <laughs> not even a police officer, though obviously they discuss all of their cases with her, she was probably very similarly to Molly in the sense of just 
crime and murders were her bread and butter. So they, the theory of the car is out there. And in a way, their plan on how do you get rid of it, that makes the most sense because it's going to be recorded as car hit tree. It's not going to be recorded as car hit deer. I still think that the police, if they go into looking into the car, and especially with the glass they found, should look into every single car that had to have some kind of fixing or, you know, any accidents that were filed because you just need to do that in the same way that yeah good police that would be to check every single one of the judges cases because you don't know which one's going to be linked but I I'm just really enjoying it and the, it's just such a crazy show um and you really never know where it's going to go and what it's going to do um I love the Solversons and father-in-law like I love them so much and I'm so convinced that it's going to be tragedy because I swear we've never met Molly's mum well they, well, they don't mention her. What if they do is that she's dead. I don't know. Um, so the crime family, at this point, I feel like they're going to rip themselves apart here because Kansas wants to take over. They're all, like, disintegrating and splintering. And, yeah, you need a peaceful transition of power to ensure success and stability, especially when there are outside threats. Um, and, yes, I don't blame the local cop for being scared of them and kind of doing what they want because... If you're in a situation where that gang is built up, you've got to be bloody brave to be able to. Like, the only people that stop gangs like that are the ones that are brave as hell and willing to sacrifice things to get there. And I do not blame most people for not being like that. Um, where I wasn't there, I don't... It's just so interesting because they're not going to find his body even to know he's not there. Like, they very thoroughly got rid of his body. Unless someone's going to report that their meat tastes different. But oh, I'm assuming they threw out the meat a bit. <laughs> Just don't, I'm calling him the meat as well. Ugh. The to the dynamics there with the kids and the parents, they're all just so fascinating to see where it's going to go. Um, and it's definitely going to get explosive, especially if they go to war against Kansas. And now that he sent him to like find Rye, if Kansas have him kill them, if the cops get in the way, kill them. Please don't kill the cops. Not okay. There's two cops. I don't want you to kill the rest. I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> but they're, they're getting there on the right trail. The police are putting the pieces together. You know, he kind of now is going to be fairly confident that the typewriter dude was involved. Um, so although he's kind of one step behind still, he's putting the pieces together. And if they just listen to the wife's theory and piece that together, they can maybe start tracking down car accidents, especially if they can try and do that before the crime families. Um, we've just got to hope for our hit and run couple that they're going to get away with this because otherwise they're going to die when the crime families come and kill them. <laughs> But this was a brilliant episode as always. I feel like this review is not as detailed or as long, but I think this episode was more of a continuing to put the pieces in motion, to continuing to set things up for where it's going to go. I think I really enjoyed the way that Fargo characterises people, because although it's a very strange show, like it's got a very weird tone to it. It's the same tone as season one had, the same tone the movie had, kind of that boom, 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 and everything's that little bit wacky, but at the same time, the characters feel really real. They talk about real things or they they just they seem more they seem fleshed out in a different way to other shows um and i really do enjoy that i enjoy the family dynamics you have the different character relationships the strange criminals you always have and i'm very scared about what's going to happen um i'm pretty sure something's going to go drastically wrong because didn't molly i know i said this every time but molly's dad stopped being a police officer after some terrible case went wrong where there were loads of bodies now that could be some other case he was involved in but it's probably this one which means that things aren't going to go well for him and i want them to um but we will see um thank you so so much albert for sponsoring this show i'm just so excited to see where it goes next a reminder you can find the unedited versions up on my patreon two weeks in advance and you can get the edited version one week in advance on my patreon thank you so much for watching